This is bad, and I don't think it's because the Bitcoin price is going to crash heavily. Even though that's possible, it's actually something else, and this is going to cost people a lot of money. I don't have that much time to record today, so we're going to go straight into the video. Uh, and let's clean this chart up. So something that really bothered me is uh, this happened the other day. Uh, let's say price was around here, uh, floating down here. And this was the analysis I shared with everyone transparently. And really, it's a consistent analysis that I've been sharing. Uh, so we've got this key structural level here. Zoom out to the one week. And you can see it. this 24.5K level is uh, probably the most important level on the chart, at least when it comes to my trading and uh, for most technical analysis, I believe. So after we broke this level here, market structure really shifted and we're floating just above it right now. Uh, there's a full possibility, absolute full possibility that we come straight back down, bounce around here a while and then come back and test this 16K level here. This is completely possible and I haven't remotely ruled this out. And it would actually line up with the narrative that the price goes sideways, breaks back above right around the halvening um, in 2024 and then starts bouncing up. This is a completely real possibility and wouldn't surprise me at all if it happens. Although most influencers are telling you the bull market has already started because of this here. And I mean, if we zoom out to the monthly, it gets even a bit more ridiculous. I mean, look at this. Uh, you guys understand candlestick analysis. The blue candles here or red candles for most people's charts represent the bearish ones and then the white ones are the bullish candles. We imagine that there's a war going on between the bulls and the bears. Right now, the bears are completely dominating this war. This entire movement of green candles doesn't even really match one and a bit bare candles from not too long ago just a few candles ago before this period of consolidation which this data doesn't really matter much so yeah that's one possibility i want uh, absolutely everyone to be aware of so back to the one week now the next key level i'm going to be watching is this resistance here it's about 30.6 when we zoom in we'll narrow it down into the exact level so from a really high time frame these are the two most important levels we have we break this level here and uh, market structure shifts and the market trend gets a little bit more neutral and we'll start bouncing between either the 16k level here or a little higher around this 20k level the first test will give us enough data to get a clearer picture there we'll deal with that when we get there I highly doubt we'll get a sharp aggressive move straight down like this, but if we do, uh, the best play I see to the downside is I will be looking to short a breakdown into this range. Obviously, I'll pay attention to how we approach this level, how we react to it, but uh, we can set two targets, one here and one here around 16K. So we're looking at 16K and then probably 19K just under the 20K level and see how price reacts to these two levels and catch a move down towards them. Great play, solid opportunity. Now let's go to the one day and get a better idea of what's happening in the short term. And this is where we add one more level to our chart, which is around here, let's say 27.2K. I really like this level here uh, because let's zoom into the four hour. Let's get the price down and it goes to about 30.4K. So now we've got our key level set. And this is the analysis I did the other day, looking at the most important levels. And I said very clearly, hey guys, I'm not really looking to buy over here. Why am I not looking to buy here? Because firstly, I don't have a good system for this sort of setup. Uh, I've got two main setups I'll be trading. Those are breakouts from range. So I'll try catch breakouts here. This one failed, but something like this one here did really well. And the other one is I'm pretty good at spotting reversals after a failed breakout. So I managed to catch a nice short here with a decent invalidation and took good profit. Now, what I'm not good at is catching random reversals on supports. So I was not personally looking for a buy here. The other thing is, I, in fact, I strongly preferred looking for the breakdown play down to this level. So if we lost this level with confirmation and I got my trigger, I would have looked for a breakdown play um, as far down as I could, as much profit as I could get in that. Now, why is the play to the upside not as attractive here? Because take a look, we've got a form of resistance here. We've got a form of resistance here. We've got a form of resistance here, and there's a lot of price action here, which may muddies the waters. It makes it difficult to know where to set your targets and where to set your invalidations. On top of that, we don't have any key levels. And when you don't have key levels, you tend to get really choppy price action. We also are not in a strong uptrend. 
These are bullish market conditions without a doubt. We go to the one day, we add the moving averages, and yeah, you see a clear uptrend with a slight reversal right now where it's weakening, but without a doubt, this is a clear uptrend. But compare this to this here. This is the full-blown bull market. This is what the trend looks like in a full-blown bull market, which started after 12K and then went parabolic after 20K. So actually a more accurate comparison is before the initial 12K breakout. We're sort of in these areas where look, choppy breakdown, move up, move up, sideways, break up, choppy breakdown, move up, sideways, versus what you get afterwards, which is this, it's just break up, ridiculous upside, bit of a move down, break up, ridiculous upside, break up, ridiculous upside. And in these sorts of conditions, it's hard not to make money because you've got such long periods of the price going up only that you just long mostly and you make money. That's it. You'll lose money here and get chopped up, but most people will just back hold, pray, and then it'll go up and they'll be fine. And they make so much money leverage trading the moves up that they've got a lot of cushion and they just view it as cost of business. But here you can't do that because look, we've got the exact same thing. Big break up here, then smaller break up, then chop, chop, break up, sideways chop, small move up, down, more chop. We need to expect the chop. Our systems need to be ready for the chop. This means less aggressive with our profit targets. This means tighter with our stop losses or less tight in certain situations if you're trying to avoid chop at the cost of your risk to reward ratio. So here we are approaching this level, understanding the trend, understanding my edge. I'm not looking for anything here. And then what's about to happen is what really bothered me online. Because so many of your bull market heroes, famous accounts were telling us how we're back, the bull market is here and gloating, getting hyped up. And I know because I've been there, I've been there when I don't have an influencer account. And when the price moves up like this, I'm feeling FOMO. I have the FOMO, I want to invest, I want to buy, but um, when I hear people I respect, people I look up to, multi-millionaires who I think are geniuses, when mostly they just were early and got lucky, getting excited, we're so back, the bull market is here, I'm gonna be buying this. I'm going to be buying this thinking, oh, okay, price is going up, um, this is Bitcoin and it's up how much percent? Let's see, 10%, 10% in a few hours, it's time to go, it's the bull market. And what happens is, boom, it does go up. And now you're confident and now you think you're fine. And now it's up 11, 12% almost. And what happens afterwards? Boom, candle like this. Oh my God, the market's manipulated. How could this happen? This is so weird, black swan event. No, these are the trading conditions. This is the PVP market. This is not the full blown bull market. It is designed to take money from bad traders and give it to good traders. And every single one of you have potential to be good traders. You do not need to be a genius to be a good trader and you absolutely can make money in these conditions. All you need is a clear route and a profitable strategy. And I've got evidence, it's not just me. Sure, I have seven years experience, but we have people in our Discord who after one month started making serious money. We've got wins posted every single day. And I'm not trying to shield the Discord. You don't need my Discord or any education product. If you have a ton of time, you can go do it yourself. Just watch my videos here, learn from them. And if at some point you decide you want more, you want a clearer route to profitable trading, click the link in the description below. I don't even need to share this because we're getting so many referrals just from members having success, loving the product. Anyway. Back to the video. So this is where people lose money. And this is why I knew not to trade this. I had zero FOMO as the price, price was going up here because I knew it wasn't a bull market. Like the, the, we, our key level is obviously 30K. And I say obviously because if you guys have any knowledge of technical analysis, you know $30,000 is going to be a key psychological level. And to say the uptrend has started, to say the breakout has started right before this 30K level is nonsensical, especially given the previous price action. Now it was very different at this point here. So this breakout here is a trade I took. This breakout here is a trade I shared. And the difference between this and this was this was fresh price action. This was much more likely to trigger a form of euphoria because we're breaking local tops. Here, we're not breaking any local tops. Even on the daily, this wasn't a quick deviation. We were here for almost a week. So the way I play, this now moves my key level. See, this would have been a situation where the key level wouldn't have been moved. Uh, so imagine, let me just repeat this. 
So price goes sideways, breaks up, goes sideways, comes down, retests down. Okay, so let's put this here and key level. Okay, so there's a difference between this, pardon my terrible art, and a breakout like this. Look, price goes sideways, breaks out, comes straight back down, goes sideways, breaks out again. So the difference between a breakout that looks like this and a breakout that looks like this is quite significant because if it quickly goes up and comes straight back down, the market doesn't have much time to react. It shows me that we tapped a fresh level of supply up here and didn't exhaust it whatsoever. And before the market really had a time to react, the price came back down. This looks like a deviation from my key level. This looks like significant new data that results in me adjusting my key level. I've done a few videos on data analysis and that is just a form of data analysis. See, instead of just viewing this as a deviation and circling it, I move my key level. And anyone who didn't, well, they would have got chopped off by this candle here, which, you know, it's just designed to chop people up. So let's go to present day. Back to the four hour after this came back down, hit this support level here and started going back up. Actually I think buying here would have been a decent play. Lots of systems around that. Again, not ideally mine, but after price came back down, this was definitely a logical area of demand. And we got recent data supporting that as well. And you've got a clear invalidation as well. So again, this isn't my ideal system, but any one of you could easily design a system off of trading these key support levels after some confirmation has come in. So you can set your stop loss at about 2% here. And to get a two risk to reward ratio, you only really need to target a small fraction of the move. And if we go a little bit higher, this is actually nicely confluent with this resistance here. Initially, I didn't like it because we didn't really have any evidence that this area was going to act as a key support. And given this data here was so choppy, I couldn't quite identify exactly where it was going to land. But this here was pretty clean, less choppy. I identified this level and then you could look for an entry here. But again, very hard to catch given how quickly this came back down. So I put a lot of education into this video. If you guys are actually looking to learn to trade, this is going to be highly valuable. If you want signals and I don't know, turning a thousand dollars to a million dollars, this isn't the video for you and I probably can't help you do that. But if you wanna make consistent profits as a trader, if you wanna be able to quit your nine to five job and treat this like a business, then absolutely I can help with that and have help with that for multiple people. Next plays I'm looking for, are very simple. I wanna play at this extremity here and above it. I may potentially look for shorts, but unlikely. I'll just see how the price action unfolds. And the next short I'm looking for is here. So to clarify, my top play is a breakout from the 30.5K level. My next top play is a breakdown at this 27.2K level. And then I may potentially look for with the reduced risk, a short around this level to catch the move back down, but I don't love it anymore because I always like catching that first real market structure shift. And a quick explanation because these plays are some of my favorite, even though I make less money on them than breakout plays. Uh, they're a lot more satisfying because uh, they're a little bit more complex. It's why I was drawn to Elliott Wave when I first started because I love the intricacy and the complexity. Um, just to give you guys a quick explanation. Look, market structure over here. Market structure breaks down. Price goes under. Now that market structure has gone down, this is the break of market structure. Now I'm betting that look, high low high, I'm betting that we're going to get a proper lower high here and then the price is going to go back down. So this entire region below this could become a lower high. So you scale your entries in this region a little bit higher actually, just move that probably there and then stopping below that. So I am making the bet, the price is going to go up, form a new higher low and then my stop loss will probably be around there because I'm betting that we're not going to break market structure and go there. Then you watch the price action break out and you see that it just confirms the market structure, reverses, comes back down. There's other names for this sort of trading setup, but for me, these are just clear reversals after a failed breakout. Hope this video is helpful. Do let me know in the comments below if you guys like these more educational videos versus just here's my analysis, here are my price predictions. I'll catch you next time.